writes, I didn't get a call from my son on Father's Day this year. Our political disagreements have made things hard. I'm a 59-year-old progressive and special education teacher, and I'm voting for Kamala Harris in November. Well, that explains it. Nick is 21, and he would say that he holds traditional conservative values, but he's conflating those values with radical MAGA ideas, which correlate the right with patriotism, manhood, intelligence, independence, and honesty. Bruh. I understand where my son's vulnerabilities came from and why this right-wing posturing was able to seep into him. I understand it but I still regret it. Oh no, manhood, intelligence, independence, and honesty, you can't have that for your children. Definitely not, sir. So it's been a while since I did a reaction video. I mean, like based on like ideas and reacting to the news. And this is the thing that I've been kind of reacting to is the fact that um, you have a lot of these Democrat parents, these very progressive liberal parents getting outraged over their sons leaning more towards Trump. I remember I made mention to a story about how a black woman on a call somewhere she essentially disowned her son because she found out her son, this is a black lady, by the way, found out her son was a Trump supporter or was planning to vote for Trump. And she didn't like that idea. And it seems like this is a, like a growing trend for progressives. Is like a part of them is like experiencing the same thing that conservative parents were known to experience. And a lot of the time, I see this as one of the reasons why there's such a political divide that's going on amongst the, the, the sexes right now between men and females is that we're prioritizing different things because of the fact that the parties cater for us differently. And in the intro, I showed you it was a Brett Cooper reacting to a story of a man um, getting angry for the fact that his son identified with Trump um, and you saw intelligence, integrity, honesty. And the messaging from the Democrats, like I said, and many, I may mention this numerous times, and I think I'm re reiterated here in this video, is that now the Democratic Party are starting to try to find a way to message to young men. And I've been talking about how the Democratic messaging is very feminine. It doesn't really speak to me as a man. Like, I, I, I don't see anything, like, I don't, I, I feel alienated by the Democratic Party. Democratic Party got no men that I want to really emulate. Tim Walls look like a buffoon. I want competent people. I want competent. And Trump represents that in a way. Hey, he's competent. He he speaks his mind. Men like that. Men like integrity. And I feel like Tim Waltz lacks integrity. Kamala Harris is a flip-flopper. She don't show any type of strength. She doesn't appeal to me. But I digress. Let's get into this um, Wall Street Journal's kind of explanation and them and them trying to explain why so many men are leaving the Democratic uh, Democratic Party. Let's take a look. That's partly because of one specific group, young men. Young men have increased their support of the Republican Party from 35% to 48%, a 13 percentage point increase in just seven years. And this is a new trend. While 2020 exit polls show that young men backed Biden by 15 percentage points, a February 2024 Wall Street Journal poll found they favored Trump by 14 percentage points. And this loss of young male voters is a major issue for the Democratic Party going into November. The question now, can Kamala Harris bring some back? Here's what's driving young men to support Republicans and what it could mean for the presidential election to come. America great again. When we ask young voters, what issue is most important to you when you go to cast a vote? Among young men, it's the economy. Now, I'm going to stop it right there. The top issue, and this is this is the, the cognitive dissonance that I had to like kind of fight for, fight against, is because in 2022, I thought, you know, red wave, I was like, yo, look, the economy is bad, inflation, there's no way, there's no way that the Republicans drop this. And they did. I'm like, yo, what the hell's going on? And then someone, you know, I remember someone disagreed with me in the comment section and I remembered, I was like, yo, abortion is not going to be a, 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 the top issue that women vote on. And dude was like, nope. It's going to be abortion. I remember I went back and forth with this commenter. And it was a I told you so moment for that commenter. Because I was like, yo, these women really came out for abortion. You see the, you see the scale? Look, look at the oranges of the women. Green is the men. Look at the orange. 22%. 22%. This is why Trump is posturing the way he's posturing. This is why Trump's like, he's trying to reiterate a look. I'm neutral on abortion. The pro-lifers may not like it, but this shows pro-lifers you still got work to do with the young women. Because look at the men. Men barely care about it. Yeah. Men barely care about it. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the disconnect that I'm talking about. 
Because what Kamala Harris' policy position? Kamala Harris' main policy position is abortion. Abortion rights, abortion is. It just feels like the Democratic Party is just a party of women. And men are just supposed to go along to get along. No. And they're wondering why that this kind of uh, imagery and, and contrast is so repulsive to many men. Especially the more masculine you are, and especially the more traditional you are. I'll consider myself very traditional. And seeing that from the I'm like, no, this I, I can't I can't go along with this. And men are more, and this is this is my personal view, but men through their gr growing up, we know a lot of men that talk talk a lot. Like they talk a lot of ish. They like, oh, I, I, I'm this, I'm the best, I'm the best ever, whatever. And then in the world of men, it's like, yo, you gotta prove yourself. You gotta prove you're the best. You're gonna have to show me. And this is how a lot of men think. So when you got Kamala Harris coming out here telling you she's going to do stuff and men are like, yo, you, you're in office right now. Why you aren't you attempting to do something you're doing, you, you have the power and ability to do right now. Your action speaks louder than your words. I don't care what you, you're going to do when you're president. What you're doing now should be a continue, and, and you becoming president should be a continuation of what you're doing right now. And what you're doing right now, no, none of your voters can name an accomplishment. And it goes to show that many reasons why a lot of women are voting for the Democratic Party is due to abortion and abortion alone. That's it. Single issue voters. To me, single issue voters are some of the most emotional voters we have in our electorate. I'm just saying. And I believe men are less likely to be single issue voters because I think men worry about uh, a collection of things. An economy, the immigration, inflation. Those are my top three right there. They're speaking to me right there. Democracy is a made-up thing. Like they, no, there's no threat to democracy. Only liberal left-wing men believe that ish, in my view. But this is what we're dealing with. Among young women, it's abortion. 17% of men say the economy is the most important issue, followed by democracy and immigration. Whereas for young women, the top issue is abortion, by a lot. Why is this happening? Well, we put the reasons into two different buckets. One is the life experiences that young men and young women are having. Those life experiences are diverging. Young men without a college degree have seen the greatest decline in labor force participation. Meanwhile, a record 87% of college-educated women are in the workforce. And today, women make up 60% of college graduates. But they still want to pretend they're oppressed. This is feminism for you. They don't talk about women also have majority of the student loan debt. Men no longer see a value in college. I I don't know if you like, like this is this is why I I like I like to hear what the liberals interpret this data as, because men see that this is not a good RRI, but women continually doing this because women are followers. I'm, I'm just being honest. That's why they follow the latest trends. This is why because they like to be socially connected, and if society is saying, "Hey, you got to go to college," women are going to just go in because society said so. While a man is more likely to be like. No, if it's not, if it's not, if I don't see no benefit in it, I'm not going to do it. I don't care what society says. Men are more disagreeable by nature. That's science. That's nature, right? So when men don't see a value in something, they're not going to participate in it. And then women and the media try to portray this as a good thing. Oh my God, look, women are, so, are, are overachieving. Look at them. But I'm like, yeah, but you don't see the crippling debt they got. Now they're here petitioning the government to give them student loan forgiveness, which over disproportionately benefits women as well. This is what I'm talking about. The policies that the Democrats are pushing, men are not seeing any benefit in it. And they're making a logical choice, even if they're begrudgingly voting for Trump. They're going to say, hey, given the trade-offs that I have, given the options that I have, Trump is my best bet at actually helping me out. This is, the, this is, how, this is how I'm thinking as a man. Taking my political ideology out of it. I'm thinking as a man, I'm like, yo... There's nothing that the Democratic Party is doing that really helps me if I'm thinking along gender. But I'm supposed to vote along for this? Because of what? And it's the same thing black men are saying to black women. Like, what, you want me to continue voting for this party along with you? Because you benefit from this party? Affirmative action hire? You get two, you get two, you, you do, you're two for one. You fit two quotas. You're a woman and you're black. I only fit one quota. So that means you have more of of a benefit from these programs than I do. Goldman Sachs, all these corporations are investing so much money into black women, but nothing for black men?
Mm. Thinking minds, scratching your head. Black men start asking, yo, what, what Democrats are going to do for me? And they start to realize there's nothing for you in the, in the Democratic Party. At least with the Republican Party, you're like, yo, I can take advantage of these opportunities that they're providing for all of America. I'm not going to get special treatment like I am I'm going to get in the Democratic Party, but this is a better bet than what's going on over there. I digress. This division that we're seeing between young men and young women, it goes beyond who they're going to vote for for Congress or president. It goes to a range of policy issues. So then let's look at what the government is offering. The Biden administration has moved to forgive federally funded student loans. That affects young women more than young men. During the 2019-2020 school year, 49% of female undergraduate students took out loans, compared to only 42% of male undergraduates. And 66% of all student debt is carried by women. The young women favored forgiving student loans by 45 percentage points. The young men were about equally divided. I mean, so so they like they, they, look the liberals. They're telling on themselves. They they're literally telling men, yo, yeah, we. We we overcatered to the women and we got nothing for you. Well, at least in the Republican platform, it's like nah. It's everyone gets the same rules, same shot, same opportunity. We're not giving special treatment for nobody. We're not trying to disproportionately create anything for nobody. They don't want to. They don't want to mention that most Americans also never graduated college. Some Americans never have a college degree. Sixty percent, sixty percent of Americans do not have a college degree. So student loan forgiveness is universally unpopular. But young women, yeah, absolve me of my bad decision making. That's how men see it. This is why men are split on it. Democrat Party, you offer nothing for men. And then you got black mothers, black American mothers, black liberal mothers, surprised why their young sons, why their Gen Z son is either not going to vote or so anti-Democrat. You wonder why the black male vote... They, it, is starting to trend towards the Republicans. You wonder. I digress. I mean, that's a big difference. Meanwhile, young men support extending Trump's tax cuts by 23 percentage points. I, I know someone might take this the wrong way, but I don't care how you interpret it. Let's think about it rationally. Men benefit from tax cuts. Men are more likely to work. Men are less likely to take government assistance, government benefits. So men see this as I get to keep more of my money for myself and my family. While young women see this as, oh, my God, there's less government benefits for, for WIC, uh, child care, child, like, you know, they want to federalize everything. They want, they want uh, daycare, like uh, federal fun federally funded daycare, and they know they need taxes to fund that stuff. This is why young women are, disproportionate, or, are more likely to disagree with the tax cuts because they see that as less resources going to government benefits that they can take advantage of. Because women are more likely to use government uh, benefits than men are. Democrat, you see, you see, you, and y'all surprised why young men are leaving the Democratic Party, which cut the corporate tax rate and reduced some individual income tax. And now, because of our tax cuts, you can keep more of your hard-earned money. But women oppose the proposed extension by 20 percentage points, a full 43-point difference. That's data that goes like this. Young men headed in one direction and young women in the other. That's a big difference. Data does not usually segment young voters that remarkably. This is something new. Which brings us back to this chart. 22% of young female voters say abortion is their number one issue in this election, a key aspect of Harris's campaign. We trust women to make decisions about their own body. Only 3% of young male voters said the same. And young men and women stacked up differently on other issues as well. With immigration, Trump's policies are much more likely to be supported by men than women. Men support deploying troops at the border by 10 percentage points, whereas women oppose this policy by 15 points. You know what I hear? Feelings versus practicality. It may not feel good to kick someone out of the house. Oh, my God, we're kicking these poor homeless people to die. Ain't our problem, babe. We can't take care of these people. We, can, I, we only make enough to take care of our own people. We can't take in, we can't take in more people. It's going gonna, it's gonna to impact everyone else. This, this, is, this is immigration at a larger scale. If you think about it like a village and you get some bunch of people coming into your village, you're like, no, 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 no. We can't share resources with these people. 
our resources are are, are good enough and a, a functional enough that maintain our population currently as is. It's the practical versus the feelings. This is what this data is breaking down. This is how I'm interpreting the data. It shows me that, yo, it seems like a lot of young women are impractical. They don't know how things get. They don't understand how things are maintained and structured in society and how to continue maintaining that into the future. They don't, they don't see the cost of making decisions. They don't see the opportunity cost. They don't see the ramifications for making certain decisions based on feelings. This is why nothing ever gets done with your feelings. This, this is all it shows me. It shows me that, yo, it, it, they're projecting the data to, for me, as a man, I see this as women being impractical. Women, women focusing on how something look instead of the outcomes and results of a policy position. Women are looking at the desirability of a policy while men are looking at the feasibility of a policy, the results of a policy. This is how tyrants get into power. All they got to do is give you good intentions. And then when those good intentions give you hell, that's when you want to come to regret it. This is why they say single women, this is why single women disproportionately vote for the Democratic Party. Married women vote, most of them vote for the Republican Party. Because as a married woman, you get exposed to how men think about issues. And you're saying, oh, that does make sense. Yes, I, I, I did meet a case where someone said something sounded good, but then when I actually did it, it was actually bad. Men, men, this is how you say we, we, we kind of, we're supposed to be complementary to each other, right? But when you leave us alone, this is how, this is how, we, this is how the, the, the data divides itself up. And they wonder why dating is such an issue in America today, especially for Gen Z, especially with women, right? Women pretending that they're tolerant, pretending that they're open-minded, when in reality they're not. Their intention is to be open-minded. Their intention is to be tolerant. But when they go against when they when they get experienced with views against things they don't like or disagree with, they're the most closed minded. Democratic women are the most person most likely to block you, unfriend you, disassociate with you if you have alternative political opinions from them. Women are women are creating the division in the culture right now. They won't date a guy if he's a, if he's a Trump supporter, if he support mega Republican conservative. If they disagree with them on abortion, women are doing this. Women are driving this. And then it'll be the same ones complaining about the state of dating today. I digress. And when it comes to building the wall, one of Trump's key immigration policies, men are only slightly leaning towards opposition, but women overwhelmingly oppose it. These gaps are hard to explain just by differences in lived experience, which brings us to the second thing that explains the gap between young men and women. What are the candidates and what are the parties saying to young voters? Donald Trump and the Republican Party are putting out a lot of messages expressly intended to appeal to young men. Donald Trump has gone to ultimate fighting championship matches. He recently appeared on the podcast of Logan Paul. He went to a sneaker convention to sell his own brand of sneakers. We gotta get young people out to vote. These are audiences that are overwhelmingly male and overwhelmingly filled with young men. And it's a way that Donald Trump and his campaign have been saying, hey, young men, I'm with you. I'm on the... And, and there's another thing, too. Like, Donald Trump, he, appe he appeals to all Americans, right? Men and women. But with Democrats, it only seemed like... It's women. It's, it's predominantly women, right? Look at their convention. Look at the RNC. The RNC and the DNC are a perfect representation of how the parties are messaging to Americans. Republicans are like, yo, we're family. We're a team. We're all in this together. They had women speakers. They had male speakers. You didn't feel like, you know, they prioritized one over the other. It just feels like, yo, we, we have a place for everybody on this party. That was how the RNC messaging came across to me. The DNC was like, Oh, women this, women that, abortion this, abortion that. And then Trump, 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 Trump. And men are like, okay, cool. You know, yeah, women are getting their careers and all that. That's nice for them. That's just one way of living. But uh, your policies, what you're going to do? No, 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 no. You want Trump to win? That, that's, that's what men get. And you expect men to vote on that? This is breath. I, I, I've seen enough.
Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you believe are the reasons why men are leaving the Democratic Party? And is it the messaging? I think it's the messaging. I think they got nothing for us. Like, I'm just being honest. As a man, the Democratic Party got nothing for me. But that's most of my thoughts. I'd like to hear those in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.